Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And patch 9.15.1 was just released on the North American and European servers yesterday, but we are already seeing some fantastic games in the Lorraine replacement, the Tier 9 French medium tank, the Bat Chat 25T AP. And that AP is very important because it's the only way to differentiate this tank, uh, apart from visually, compared to its bigger brother, the Bat Chatillon 25T at Tier 10. So our hero of the day is Villain Lives Matters, and he is on the North American server, and he is going to showcase just pretty much what this tank is all about. Now, how does it differ from the Lorraine, and how does it compare to also a tank which lots of people compare to the Lorraine at Tier 8 French Heavy, the AMX 5100? Well, all three of those tanks that I just mentioned have the same 100mm autoloader. Six rounds in the magazine allows you to do up to, well, on average, 1,800 damage per magazine that you can spread quite happily between several targets. One thing that's rather annoying, though, is the shell delay. Look how long it is before you get to fire. That's certainly not the same as the Skoda T50. To be exact, I think it's 2.73 seconds between each round on this tank, which means that you're going to be firing for 11 seconds before you've before you've managed to fire off all six shells. Actually, what am I talking about? It's more like 12 and a half seconds, considering that there are six rounds in this autoloader, which is pretty darn awkward. But if you manage to have those, shall we say, quite static engagements, then you can perform quite well. So we've, we've talked about the fact that the, this tank has the... Well, all three of those tanks have the same gun, but how do they differ on each of the vehicles? Well, the Lorraine has the best reload, or shall I say had the best reload, at 40 seconds per magazine. This tank is right in the middle, 45 seconds, to the AMX 5100, which has a 50 second reload. But remember, this tank is a tier higher than the 5100. One thing that a lot of people will be disappointed with, with regards to this tank, is the fact that it has 6 degrees of gun depression, well, as the Lorraine had 8 degrees, so a lot of people might be annoyed that they don't have that kind of ridgeline poacher that was the Lorraine. But then again, look at the bat chat. Fair enough, it looks like an Amex 1390 that had one too many croissants for breakfast, but it is a much smaller profile than the Amex 5100 and the Lorraine, so hopefully that should allow you to duck and weave and maybe just avoid the shells altogether. And you really, you're going to have to avoid them in this tank because it only has 30 millimeters of front alarma, which is absolutely awful. Now, Villain Lives Matter puts in one into the M41 Walker Bulldog. Will he be able to put in another one? He's got 200 hit points there. 245 to be exact. He does. He shuts him down. And he's still got another three rounds to go after this T28 prototype with his team. Now the Comet's making his way around the corner. Hopefully that should allow Villain Lives Matter to get the side of the T28. He does. Now he decides to stop and he pulls back. The T28 prototype shoots one into, I believe, the Comet there, taking off most of his hit points. But at least the T28 has turned his attention to him, so he won't follow it up. And hopefully that will have allowed the Comet to get in some uh, a few side shots. Now unfortunately that shell there did go into the tracks, which means that he didn't finish off the T28 prototype. And I can understand why he didn't really go all in there. If he tried to get round the back, I mean, he could have exposed himself to the T29, possibly the Leopard prototype on the enemy team. Maybe in the, even the Object 704, who was last spotted in the center. And let's uh, not... I forgot to mention the three artillery on the enemy team. So you can see why he wanted to unload and be able to pull back. But right now, Villain Lives Matter is pretty much going to carry this game. He's seen what's coming in. He knows what's coming in from the west. There's a... Two T-34-3s, there's a T-54, there's a 1375, and there's probably even an IS-3 backing them up. Now, one thing that's interesting here is that he, he feels comfortable to fire off three rounds. A few blind there at the Object 704. Fair enough, the Object 704 is a very important tank on the enemy team. But I think in retrospect, I think Villain would have probably preferred to keep those rounds to be able to interrupt the cap circle, because there are now three players pressuring his cap. Now he's got an IS-3 and a Borsig that he's going to be able to work with here. Puts his first round into the T-34-3. He decides to switch to the other one. He's trying to reset as much of the cap as possible. He sets the T-34-3 on fire, but unfortunately he does use a fire extinguisher, and so he doesn't go for the full burn. So this is where you have that really awkward 45 seconds reload in this tank. But I love what Villain is doing here. He's pushing up. He's drawing the attention of the T-34-3s. Hopefully that should allow the Borsig and the IS-3 to advance in. And what it also means is that they're turning their turret to him so they're giving their side of the turrets to the IS-3 so it should be a nice easy penetration for that tank. Unfortunately a 
bit of a lapse there, and it looks like he gets shot by the T-34-3. Maybe that was a low roll. Not sure if that was the T-54 who hit him. Now the 1375 is trying to press around to be able to assassinate. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Oh, great interrupt there by the IS-3. And now Villain gets to pass the... He's been past the torch, so to say, of the base defense. He's fully reloaded. And now this is where that 1800 magazine does come in handy. Now, I don't know why he's trying to use third person here so much. I think that if he was in first person, he could have probably been able to do a little bit more. But maybe he, he loves the fact when the reticle just goes slightly over the ridge line, And that's a tactic that a lot of players use to be able to see when then they can fire and give the, the tiniest amount of... Uh, the tiniest amount of their turret shown. However, personally for me, I vastly prefer to use the the first person in those kind of engagements where you can kind of bump up, fire, pull back, but you know, to each their own, right? Different ways, and a lot of people will prefer the third person method, especially when it comes to having the awareness of seeing when the other tanks have shot. So there you go, there, there are many ways to do, I guess, the same thing. But I digress. One thing that really, really sucks about the Batchat 25T AP is the fact that it doesn't actually carry that much ammunition. This is his last magazine. Fair enough, Villain has had to do 5,299 damage so far that we have seen, and he might have hit that object 704, but these are the last six shots that he's going to have. Luckily, the artillery misses him. 544 hit points will not have gone a very long way against that American self-propelled gun. And he's fired two of his remaining six shells. Now what I love here is that, and this is something that can be also good and bad about the uh, the North American server the Villain Lives Matter plays on. And that's that they're very vocal and they like to talk to each other a lot, which I think is great. Um, in some ways, for example here, where they're communicating how much health each of the tanks have. He, got, he gets told by the T-54 on his team. Oh, wait a minute, I'm speeding up the replay you can't scroll up anymore sorry about that uh, oh, um, he's being told by the the t54 on his team that the leopard was on low health and so he knows that he can connect those two shells in to take out the tier 9 german medium tank but these are literally now the last two shells in his tank and unfortunately he's got to take out two artillery and an object 704 that we last probably spotted on i think about 70 percent of his hit points unless i'm mistaken so that's certainly something that he's got to watch out for. So really, he needs to recruit the IS-3 and the Borsig on his team, who valiantly defended the cap circle. And these three must feel like heroes right now. Look at this. They've been absolutely carrying their team, even in non-top-tier tanks here, the Borsig and the IS-3. And so they're working it out. The Borsig's taking the east. The IS-3 is taking the center. I guess what's trying, what they're trying to achieve is maybe the IS-3 will spot the Object 704 in the center and allow the Borsig to get a side shot in. Also, the Borsig will sweep the east, which will prevent the artillery from escaping because, you know, there's nothing worse than having artillery pressuring the cap circle or alternatively getting a funky angle on you, perhaps from back here, where they're going to be able to dump rounds back um, where you thought you were going to be safe. And so Villain Lives Matter has communicated with his team how many shells he has remaining because it could be the difference between a, a win and a loss here. If his team thinks that the Batchat is going to be able to, to put out uh, the full magazine, well, that's simply not the case. Great job there by the Borsig shutting down the M5355. That is a very dangerous tier 9 American self-propelled gun that you really don't want to have hanging around at the end of the game. It's very fast. It's got a turret. It's an absolute awkward beast to try and deal with. But Villain wants to try and progress the fight here. He's managed to not spot the Object 704 yet. I don't know where he's going to be, but he sees the S-51. He decides to shoot the S-51. The IS-3 misses. And now his tank is empty. 30 rounds of ammunition in this tank. That is way lower than the Lorraine. And can you believe it? The Object 704 was there. He must have done a loop around. Doesn't quite manage to spot the 704 who went back to try and deal with the bat chat by the looks of it. He communicates with his team that he has no ammunition left, and this is where Villain Lives Matter really made the difference in this game. Just check this out. Will this Object 704 be able to shut down the IS-3? Oh, luckily he bounces. Villain Lives Matter sees that he ricochets off the IS-3. He wants to progress. Remember, the Object 704 has fantastic 120 millimeters of frontal armor, and it's unlikely the IS-3 is going to be able to get there. Look at this. He tracks the Object 704 with his bat chat with no more ammunition, locks him in place, stops him from turning around and getting the IS-3, 
and I, I bet you he just got some assistance damage from detracking that Object 704 with an ammoless tank. What a heroic play at the end of the game, and perfectly executed. So the first replay of patch 9.15.1 on this channel is an absolute cracker. Villain Lives Matter pretty much showcased how to do absolutely everything for your team to be able to secure the game. And what really set him apart, I feel, was his willingness to just work with other players on his team to candidly take down your opponents. And when you're limited to only 30 rounds of ammunition in this tank, I guess you're going to have to be a very good support player. So Villain Lives Matter picked up a defender medal here for his 87 base defense points, also the high caliber 7,000 damage. That's not bad with only having 3,300 damage shells in the vehicle, as well as a tank sniper for dealing the most damage at long range, as well as a top gun for his kill on the S51 at the end of the game. And even though Villain had to resort to firing that premium ammunition at the end of the game, he still made a profit, albeit with a premium account. And I think that this vehicle is probably going to end up being one of the most expensive tanks to play if you decide to use premium ammunition in it, because you're going to quite often have to dip into it because you're going to fire those rounds off fairly quickly indeed. So the Bat Chatillon 25 TAP, basically a bigger AMX 1390. And when you think about it, tier 9 medium tanks get matched up like tier 8 light tanks. And the only thing that's truly lacking on this tank is the view range, and I guess the camera rating compared to the AMX 1390. The view range on this vehicle is 380 meters, which is very disappointing for a tier 9 medium tank when many of its counterparts get 400, well, most of its counterparts get 400. But I guess it's early days yet for the tank, only having been released for 24 hours. I'm gonna try and pick one up on the live stream tonight and give it a good go. But Villain Lives Matter, thank you so much for uploading this on What Replays. It was an incredible round, and I just love the fact that you were willing to pretty much sacrifice your tank at the end without ammunition to be able to secure the victory. In addition to your can-do attitude with the communication with your allies, it was really refreshing to see in the, the cesspit that is mostly world of tanks in game chat so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please consider giving it a like down below it really helps the channel out and if you want to see a full tank preview of the bat chatillon 25 tap then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to see a full rundown of the statistics of this vehicle and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the bat chat ap do you think it's a good replacement for the lorraine have you played it yesterday and you miss your Lorraine entirely? I'll be interested to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.